Hi, I'm Brian Vance, BoardBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're going to break down the Olin's TTX shock install on our 2018 M4X Star Suzuki GSXR 1000R project bike. Okay. Out of the box, the Suzuki did handle really good. But at the end of the day, when you're on the track and you want to try and get to that next level, suspension work can be a real benefit and help get you there. Okay, so this performed well. Don't really have a lot of negative things to say about it. You can certainly tell when you're out there, it's a little softer than I would like. So we decided to upgrade to the Olin's TTX rear shock. Different spring rate. Of course, different valving, higher performance overall, and it does give us some flexibility too in adjustment. One of the main things that we want to do is be able to control and adjust the ride height of the bike to get the geometry in line with what the race team, the M4 X-Star Suzuki team, has used while they've been developing the GSXR 1000. This will just simply help the bike handle better and make it easier to ride when on the track. We're not gonna cover any of the geometry settings right now out of the box i made sure the shock the rebound the compression the ride height were all where they should be set and they send a document that has all the initial settings outlined right there in terms of sag geometry any of those things i'm going to do that at the racetrack this weekend with the race team at the barber finale for moto america the entire team will be there all the suspension text the text for the bikes so I'm going to get a little help getting this thing dialed in using all the information that they've gotten over the course of the last two seasons racing this bike. So I'm really looking pretty forward to that and we'll share all that with you all once we have it dialed. To begin with, we're replacing the shock. I'm leaving the front fork as is. I want to do it in stages because I want to understand the difference that the two made independent of one another. And to be honest, I've been pretty happy with the performance of the front fork to this point. The truth is, no matter how many times you do it, you get this beautiful gold Olin shock and you're ready to put it on your bike. You're so excited, you can't wait to begin the project, right? I still feel the same way and I've put tons of these on at this point. For now, I'm gonna put it back in the box and we're gonna get this project started the right way, okay? No shortcuts, we're gonna make enough room to make the install easy to do. What do we need to do to do this? Well, we have to have the bike supported on a rear stand. I'm gonna take the tire off of the Jixxer. That's just gonna allow me to move the swing arm up and down more, just get the biggest hole possible to get that shock out. Also, gonna remove the lower. You have to have some jack stands to be able to support the motorcycle. There's different ways to do it, but the typical, you know, best practice ways with rear sets, with fixed pegs, you'll use either automotive jack stands or if you have these badass pit bull jack stands, you're going to support the bike from here and then you'll use the rear stand to raise and lower the swing arm to get the shock out and then to reinstall it okay so you need a few tools to do this you can get around having these by having automotive jack stands but you really have to have a rear stand taking the rear tire off may not be completely necessary for this but you know what at the end of the day i know it's going to make the process a lot easier so we're going to go ahead and just do that right now I also have to put a tire on it for Barber. So for me, this is just kind of two birds with one stone. Kind of get the chain out of the way, and then you always want to be careful with that uh, wheel speed sensor as you pull that back and twist it out of there. Make sure you're not making any heavy contact with that. 
Okay, wheels out of the way. Now we'll take the lower fairing off. Okay, now before I put it on the jack stands, what I like to do, you can always count on the fasteners that retain the shock to be pretty flipping tight. So what I like to do is just get all that broken loose first. Up top, we have, I believe this is a, uh, a 10 internal hex. Other side's 14. So we'll get that all set up. Like I said, you can expect here to have to use a uh, reasonable amount of torque. Let's get that broken loose. Now we'll go on to the lower one. Okay, lower, we've got 14, 14. Okay, both those are broken loose. Not sure if we'll have to disassemble any further, but this is a good place to start. Now it's time for the jack stands. Want to get those up into position. Like so. And then work your rear stand. This is actually a little easier when you do it on the floor. Uh, on the work table here, you know, you're only kind of catching the edge. You really want to watch it. Looks like we're good to go though. Feels nice and stable. Now we can take the nuts off the fasteners. Before you put the shock on, you want to review the documents that come with it. They do have setup information, right? Recommended settings. You want to make sure that you start there, okay? With this bike, definitely have a little bit of an advantage. I'm heading down to Barber Motorsports Park for the Moto America season finale. And the race team that we sponsor, the team that we're partnered up with on this bike build, Team Hammer, M4 X-Star Suzuki. Well, they're gonna be there and we're gonna spend some time with them. They're gonna help me get this bike dialed in. They've got some pretty detailed notes from when they started developing this bike. Okay, and they're gonna be able to help me out with some ride height settings, geometry, so on and so forth to just get us pointed in the right direction. To begin with, I am going to run the stock fork. Not going to make any changes, not going to put a fork kit in it yet. Probably won't do that until next year. Okay, I've got uh, both the nuts off. We're going to go ahead and get that bolt out of the top of the shock now. The lower is already all the way out. And then we'll see if we need to disassemble here any further. position myself now so I can get a hand on that shock and manipulate the swing arm. All right, out it comes. Okay, before I begin putting the bike back together, you know, this is just a great opportunity to clean up some spaces that are really hard to reach. Got some Maxima stuff out now, a little suspension clean. All right, you know, a little SC1, just gonna get everything down here looking like new, and then we'll go ahead and put the shock on. Okay, I got everything cleaned up. I verified to the settings on the shock with the setup sheet to make sure where we wanna be. We can always adjust that after the fact. This is really about the install, and you see I got everything in here really super clean. Somebody just showed up from school, so I'm gonna suck him in to help out a little bit here. Go ahead and lower that swing arm again. And shock dipped in here 
and then I'll have Max push the bolt through. Hey, back, back. Give it a little, there you go. Okay, thank you, buddy. Okay, now the lower bolt. This is where having the stand on the back to control the swing arm is necessary. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get the shock positioned. Okay, now let's put in the lower bolt. We're gonna use the rear stand to adjust the position. Help Max get this lined up. Tolerance are pretty tight, there we go. He's got that pushed through. Okay, good to go, my man. From here, just gonna grab the extension and the ratchet and just kinda get it through all the way so we can get the nut on the other side. Like so, make sure it's flush. And now we're gonna come up here and you can see that the upper one is not quite in the spot the hole, so we're going to do the same thing here. I right, just got to adjust. Okay, now that's flush. We are good to go. We can put the nuts on it. Here on the top one. Okay, now we'll remove the jack stands. So we'll go ahead and lift the bike. Support it back by the swing arm. You see this one's one tip out. So grab this. Okay, now we'll torque the top nut. If you choose to use a torque wrench here, you can do that. Now we'll grab the lower one, get that torqued. Okay, now we're ready to put the wheel back on. I'm gonna make excuses before I even start. This is one of those things, this is a lot harder to do on the work table than it is to do on the ground. I don't have my foot or anything to help support the rear wheel. It makes it a little bit tougher, so we need to get it past that rear cow. Just kind of roll it in like so. Once you've done that, get the wheel squared up. Always be cognizant of that rear wheel speed sensor. That thing is key to functionality of all well, the anti-lock brakes and of course, you know, all the electronics that really help make this bike special. Okay, once we get going here, what I'm going to do is kind of get my hand underneath it. To help support it like so. You get the chain to come over. And now we're ready for the axle. Once we get that started, it gets a whole lot easier. Okay? The caliper hanger lined up. Love using the work table, it makes the videos a whole lot smoother, but man, it makes putting that rear tire on a whole heck of a lot tougher. Okay, once we've done that, let's get our axle nut back on. We're using the light tech chain adjuster, so realistically the chain tension is gonna be right where we left it. I do still like to just put a wrench in between the sprocket and the chain. Gonna roll that back, just make sure everything's Push as far forward as possible. We're gonna use our torque wrench. I realize it's probably mind blown right now because for years I've never done this, but I decided to set a better example. 
switch it up a little bit. And there we go. The rear wheel is up. Okay, so there you have it, right? We have started working on the suspension on the bike. Really excited to get down to Barber and ride the motorcycle for sure, especially having the ability to work with the race team and get some of those settings that they worked hard to learn fed into this bike. And then next year we'll do the fork cartridge kit. That's something that I'll actually install here at the shop. We've got a cool suspension vise. We'll show you all that too, so you can determine if that's something you want to do or not. If nothing else, it'll just be a kind of a cool watch to see what's really inside all the voodoo in a front fork. There you have it. Olin's TTX shock install on our 2018 M4 X-Star Suzuki GSX-R1000R project bike.